Have you ever struggled with your PowerPoint presentations? Too many dots, too many bullets, too much text? Then you may require services from John Quinn, chief presentologist in his own company, Satellite. About uh, 20 years ago I was traveling uh, from uh, the UK and we were on our way to South Africa and we were heading, myself and my wife, for a, a kind of long-term trip um, around all the way to, uh, to South Africa to travel around the African Peninsula. We we're going to buy a car in South Africa and drive through and I was uh, really had to get the map out when I saw that we were stopping in Abu Dhabi. I had never, no idea where Abu Dhabi was. So I got the map out and we had friends in Dubai, so we stopped off in Dubai and thought, wow, this place is going to kick off, so let's, uh, let's get involved and see the best we can. Uh, and then, of course, when 2000 came along, when, uh, when you could own your own business in the Middle East, we jumped at the opportunity and jumped right in and uh, got ourselves started, started Satellite and uh, really giving, started to work on presentations, realized that no one was focusing on the the hard part of, a, of any sort of event, which is what's on screen, and uh, really focused on, it became more and more obvious that people were doing bad PowerPoint, so it was a matter of trying to improve presentations generally. So we started working on presentations, so that's how we started it. We noticed that there were a lot of, you know, kind of people enjoying themselves. It was a good quality of life, and that's really what attracted us to it in the first time. And we also realized that it was a real place to do business. Um, the whole place was built around trade and business, and a wonderful place to do business because people were so open and friendly and uh, were sort of, you know, kind of a very clean and simple way to do business. So we, we kind of leaped at, uh, at the opportunity to be here and to start doing business as we, as we went along. We also noticed that there was a big desire for what we call, what, what are called knowledge workers, which are, I think, people who actually know what they're doing or have a specific industry that they've come from. And we sort of felt that we fitted into that and it was kind of a great opportunity to pass on the knowledge. And that's what we do in our business. We, 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 we train people, we show people what we do. There's no real secret to making a better presentation. So we do a lot of training as well and uh, we really enjoy doing that. Uh, we're presentologists and uh, presentology is a, a concept that a lot of people haven't heard of but basically it's just using different technologies, joining them together to enhance presentations. Generally it involves in ultimately a deal being done so it's, uh, people are very happy to spend money on it because it helps them sell better because they're presenting themselves better. Uh, we tend to do that through interaction by adding more interaction to events generally so trying to improve um, events and trying to improve how people interact at live presentations. So the whole thing should result in a, in a deal being done, which is the ultimate aim. It's a huge, huge market. Uh, the opportunity is immense. Um, I can show you a PowerPoint presentation that we created that's worth $350 million, where the company are, are applying for a, you know, for a tower to one of the major uh, sort of construction firms here and all of their intellectual property goes into that PowerPoint presentation. So uh, you may call it PowerPoint, but it's, uh, it's actually a content management system that's joining all of the video, the pictures, the images, the text, the intellectual property, bring it all together to pitch for an idea. And at that point, you know, it could be anything that you're putting it into, but we want to use a content management system that's very easy to change and that can be updated very easily. And PowerPoints are sort of chosen chosen tool and it, uh, it works very well. We've got many years of experience. We're on our 15,000th PowerPoint slide. So there's many, many different things we've done with it over the years. Um, the main challenge we very often have had is getting paid. Um, a lot of people have a challenge, obviously, with thinking, am I really going to spend a lot of money on, on a, something called a PowerPoint presentation? But actively, when people, well, actually, when people see what we do, um, they don't call it a PowerPoint presentation anymore. It becomes their whole sales pitch. And, uh, and that really has a big impact. So we tend to, most notably over the years, have learned to uh, lock our PowerPoint presentations. PowerPoint is very good at that until we get our second payment. So uh, if anyone's considering not paying us, then it's, it's very complicated. They can see the, the presentation, but they can't actually unlock it. So that's been our own real, only real challenge. Um, or also, also some of the challenges we're given is the kind of tasks we're given. The, the sort of challenges would be, can we have this by tomorrow? So we get very last minute requests. But as I often said, if you can give this market the latest technology at the last minute, 
um, then you'll always succeed. I, I notice people try to they try to make it, uh, you know, things that they tend to demand too much of this market. You know, we're we're in a place where things are happening very fast, so you've got to build your business around that. It's got to be very able to move very quickly, change. So we often get, uh, most notably, I've had a request for 2,000 keypads in Riyadh you know, by Thursday next week. So that would be a challenge for us. And we would normally jump up to that mark and we can ship 2,000 keypads in from Europe. We, uh, you know, our, our operator would apply for a visa, we'd get in there, and suddenly we'd be running an event for 2,000 people with them all voting live. So that's the kind of stuff we're, we're able to move and do very quickly. Gamification, so a lot of gamification of events. So typically people want to get everyone together for a staff party and the most logical thing is to maybe have a quiz where people are playing a game show, uh, maybe you know which one of these uh, babies is the MD, for example, up come on the screen, so that flattens the whole kind of management structure. People are seen as being more human. Um, vote for your favorite T-boy, so all the T-boy pictures come up. Can you imagine what that does for staff morale? Um, so we see a lot of people's choice, um, engaging audiences. Um, in the good old days, we had things like people want a car. Um, more and more so, they're likely to win a, an iPad, but they, that's okay. You know, recognition's a good, good gift as well. But um, very often, more and more so, we're seeing people uh, using interaction for uh, AGMs or a series as, as the economy starts to grow again and more and more companies go to uh, IPO. And we're there with our keypads, allowing people to vote. Um, live, so any kind of live voting environment and on screen where we're trying to improve the content, um, that's where we're where we are kind of best used. And uh, so yeah, we've seen you know all sorts of events. Who wants to be a billionaire? There's too many millionaires in Dubai, so you have to be a billionaire here. Um, other things, um, themed quizzes would be superheroes. Anything, we've we've done quizzes for kids in the mall. Um, so anything where there's a group of people get together and they want to ask questions or they want to get involved more, then uh, our system works very well with that, engaging the audiences. The future is definitely mobile for us. I mean, it gets via the mobile device. Um, as I mentioned, you know, people are more and more engaged. Do you know there's an app now that for presenters is very scary. It's actually manifests itself on the presenter's iPad, but the audience sit with their phones and they choose a smiley face or a sad face. If they choose a sad face, the time he has left to talk or she has to talk de decreases. So actually the audience are live. So there's a huge shift in the future from in, in terms of audience interaction away from the, uh, the presenter, unfortunately, to the audience. And it's very much more about the audience. And I kind of applaud that because, you know, the audience are the reason why we're there. We very often tell our clients, actually, we care less about you. What we care about is your message. If your message is visible on the faces of the audience and people are engaged and are enjoying your event, then we've done our job. Um, I think fundam for, fundamentally, I love the, uh, the mentality and the mix of the region. I think I'm sure a lot of other people you've spoken to have said that as well. Certainly, it's, it's an eclectic mix. So, you know, you could be talking to a, a belly dancer from Rio one day, you know, who's kind of got into presentation or, or and everybody's trying to improve themselves. And it's, a, it's kind of, the, the, kind of the, 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 the place where people can reinvent themselves or become something else and in a good way, not necessarily in a bad way. It's got great potential for any, anyone who's trying to start a business, anyone who's trying to get involved or trying to engage people more. There are many, many ways you can do it. Everyone can, can, uh, can make an opportunity. Um, but the Arabs have a great saying, which is, um, trust in Allah, but remember to tie up your camel. So I believe people should not kind of like, overextend themselves. You should always check and make sure that you've got kind of a good business, that you start your business from a, a gr good grounding. I don't believe in going and getting a million dollars from the bank. Your business should be able to make money from the day you start, it should turn a profit. And that's some of the best advice that I've had. But I've been blessed in the sense that I've found something that I love doing and I keep doing it all the time. And I think that's the number one thing. There's a lot of passionate people here. And if you're smart and clever and you find something you love doing and you go out and do it, people are gonna buy from you because you become the expert and people enjoy working with you. One of my favorite client quotations is that, you know, it doesn't feel like we're working together, it feels like we're playing. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. From. I want to play with my customers, I want to have fun with them, look at new technologies and engage them more, you know, engage their audiences more using the technology. So.